Welcome to the Vision Quest video series, a step-by-step -step guide to holistic health. This program will discuss rolfing. Hi, my name is Tony Gallardi. I'm a psychotherapist, talk show host, and writer. I've been working with people in adult transition and crisis for about 15 years. I did a talk show for two years called The Tony Gallardi Show that interviewed risk takers, people who had left chaotic lives and, and passioned their lives with brand new vocations. And then I went on to start a book called Lifequake, which is all about a seven stage map to a whole new way of being an adult. In this film, we'll be covering footage on Ida Rolf, the origins of Rolfing. You'll be seeing the benefits of Rolfing, how it's used by a practitioner, and some of the precautions involved in using Rolfing, and the actual practice itself, which involves 10 individual sessions. Rolfing is a series of 10 specific bodywork sessions involving deep connective tissue manipulation. This therapy is named after its founder, Ida P. Rolf, who called this therapy structural integration. Rolfing is a series of bodywork sessions designed to bring you back towards the vertical, to bring you back into balance. Now that can mean both physical and emotional balance, although our work is designed to work with the body structure. The aim of rolfing is to increase muscular length and overall balance, allowing the body to achieve optimal posture. In rolfing, an aligned body is said to balance better against gravity, thereby allowing the body to use energy more efficiently. Rolfing also incorporates movement integration, which applies new postural awareness to everyday actions and activities. There are a lot of theories about body structure and what it means, body language if you like. What I see is that each individual is very much that an individual. So I don't attempt to read into a person what might have happened in their past. It comes out as we work quite often. As I work a particular area, they'll remember a trauma that happened and affected that area. So we can deal with it in that way. But I don't personally subscribe to a formula. At the same time, we see that the language has described this very well. We have the pain in the neck, uh, the weight of the world on your shoulders, we understand, which is what feet do very well. So the language itself supplies us with some clues. The seeds of rolfing began when Ida Rolf, born in New York in 1896, began teaching yoga practices to patients with repeated strained injuries. Rolf believed that by performing exercises which would help stretch the muscles, soft tissue would return to optimal length and position in the body. However, in practicing yoga, she realized that certain manipulations would actually cause some joints to contract, so she began searching for other exercises to add to her nascent treatment system. Rolf explored the philosophies of the Alexander Technique and studied osteopathy, incorporating the view that structure determines function. By the early 1950s, Ida Rolf was teaching her unique system of structural integration in the US, Canada and England. In 1970, Rolfing emerged into an individual therapy and the Rolf Institute was established in the US with 40 trained professional Rolfers. In 1977, Ida Rolf published her first book describing a healing modality titled The Integration of Human Structures. Rolf died in 1979, leaving the Rolf Institute to carry on her work, which today comprises of hundreds of members in numerous countries across the world. The philosophy behind the practice of rolfing stems from the belief that a free flow of energy within aids the body's own ability to heal itself. 
This principle has been stated over and over again in many healing modalities, such as traditional Chinese medicine or polarity therapy. Rolfing addresses the principle of structural balance by aligning the body so that the forces of gravity can flow freely throughout. I see Rolfing as a very holistic approach. We're working with the physical structure. As Ida Rolf said, this is what I can get my hands on. So I roll up my sleeves and I go to work. So I tend to do the same. I can get my hands on the physical structure, so that's what I work with. In saying that, I recognize that the mind, the body, the spirit are all one. And they're housed in this structure, in this body. So as we work to open up the body, we find again the language shows us this, there's opening up lightness. We tend to feel high as opposed to down and heavy. So gravity is very much a part of the language of feeling good. So I work very much with that intent to find balance, to find opening, lightness, ease, rather than disease. Basically what we say is that your life history is responsible for where your body's shape is now. So over time, that little fall off the bicycle, or uh, it can be physical or emotional trauma, has taken the body somewhat out of alignment in gravity. This happens because we store our trauma, or the results of that trauma, in the connective tissue system in the body. The connective tissue responds to strain by shortening, tightening, and generally thickening. So our aim is to see where that's taking place in the body and to ease, lengthen, create space so that the body can come back to balance. Ida Rolf characterized the body as groups of stackable units structured by bones and soft tissue. In our bodies, bones hold the physical frame and position in space, while soft tissues, including the muscles, tendons, ligaments and other connecting tissue, hold the bones in alignment. Like other structured organisms, humans are subject to the laws of mechanics. One law states that masses must be balanced to be able to be stable. However, if muscles are chronically shortened, they pull the attached bones out of balance and therefore cause misalignment to occur. In rolfing, merely repositioning the bones is believed to be inadequate to allow the bones to realign permanently because individual tissues need to be lengthened to allow the body to rebalance itself. We look at the person overall. We want to see that they can come to a place where they are in balance and aware of themselves. That gives them the choice to heal. It also allows that as we bring the body towards balance, it heals itself. Uh, there's a rather famous quote by Dr. Ida Rolf around that very subject, that as we bring the body towards alignment in gravity, then spontaneously it heals itself. I find it's much more than massage and other forms of body therapy. I trained in massage quite extensively and practiced for many years before I became a rolfer. And I don't use a single massage technique anymore. It's just not relevant. I find it goes much further. It goes much deeper. And the effects are much longer lasting and ongoing than other therapies that I've worked with. This doesn't mean to say that the others are invalid. I think the intention of rolfing is somewhat different to other forms of bodywork or massage. There's no real technique of rolfing. If it works, we use it. Having said that, there are some ways we go about it. Basically, we work on a low table 
and we use a slow, deep pressure that allows the body to open without forcing. Uh, we use some force, but it's very respectful and it's gently applied. I'll also get the client to move while I hold a, a certain area and I'll have them open up the tissue so they'll stretch around it or they'll close into it and that way we start to get that opening happening. Is it kind of coaxing the body into realignment? Very much coaxing the body. Uh, we work very much with the client and it's a process of education as much as it is of body work. So as the client becomes more aware of their bodies, they can become more responsible for the position they're in. Rolfing therapy includes a series of 10 hour-long sessions to balance the distribution of weight to the major parts of the body by lengthening and stretching soft tissues. At the end of 10 rolfing sessions, the head, chest, pelvis and legs are each evaluated for alignment with one another to verify if in fact the body has been balanced and aligned. Basically in rolfing we work through a series of 10 sessions. Each session is designed to work with a particular segment or area of the body. So in the first session we work with the breathing. If your breath isn't moving easily, nothing else is going to move easily. So we work with your breathing, that means the ribcage, the diaphragm, some work in the what we call the thoracic outlet above the collarbones to get the top ribs working easily to get the fascia in the neck open so that the musculature allow normal breathing. In the second session, we work with gravity and a base of support. So feet and the lower leg is the main intention for the session. It doesn't matter so much whether you have high arches or flat feet. The intention is to balance the feet, to organize them so that they can provide a good foundation in gravity. In the third session, we look at you from the side and say, OK, what's in front of that line of gravity through the body and what's behind it? What do we need to do to open up the structure so that it becomes more vertical? So we work with the shoulder girdle, the hip and pelvic girdle, and down through the ribs as well, we work with some the neck, opening the fascia in the side of the neck, the back of the neck, bringing it all into that vertical line. The first three sessions basically we're working with the surface layers of the body. So in the fourth session we start to work more with the core structures. That means we work mostly with the inside line of the leg and the pelvic floor. The pelvic floor being a similar support structure to the arches of the feet in that it provides a, a mobile platform for the core structures of the body. In the fifth session we keep moving upwards. We work with the belly wall, the musculature and the layers of fascia through here, then some with the organs underneath that and then we work with a muscle called the psoas and the fascia surrounding that being attached to the front of the spine and down through and through the pelvis into the leg. In the sixth session we work with the back of the body. Now that means we work with the whole back so it starts off at the heels and we work right through the back of the leg, the buttocks and up into the spine and the back itself. The seventh session is devoted to putting the head on top so having worked our way up the body, now we balance the head on top. That means the throat, the neck, the jaw, the head itself, and looking at the relationships between all of those. Uh, I may do some work inside the mouth to get at the muscles of the jaw. I may even work inside the nose, depending on need. Uh, having put the head on top in the seventh session, the last three sessions are devoted to integration. 
This work was originally called Structural Integration by Ida Rolf. And the aim of those last three sessions is to tie up all the work we've done so far, to hook it all together, look for longer lines of connection, and make that connection right through the body so that we find an easier way of moving, a better balanced, more refined sense of where we are in space, perhaps who we are as well. So this first session of Rolfing is looking at breathing, basically. We also include some back work and neck work. What I saw was actually pretty easy breathing. I'd like to see some more breath in the lower ribs at the back. I'd like to see the diaphragm relax a little more. So we work basically to open the ribs, spanning the ribs, allowing them to move freely in the sleeve of the connective tissue. Uh, I'm looking at how well the ribs hinge from the sternum, how well they hinge from the spine. And then at the lower end, we're looking at how easily the diaphragm can expand and relax. I'm also looking at the beginnings of opening the hip joints and doing some back work and some neck work. So I'll have the client in a, a couple of different positions on the table and then sitting on the rolfing bench, we do some back work to give the client a sense of how they're sitting and what's a balanced way to sit, how the pelvis can support the spine, and a sense of what it feels like in natural breathing, which way the ribs go, what it feels like when the diaphragm is operating naturally. I'm not intending to teach a particular way of breathing, but allowing the body to breathe in its natural flow and rhythm. Before and after, in this particular case, what I saw was some more length in the sides of the body and in the lower back, so in the lumbar area of the spine. We saw that after the session, the client could breathe more easily through her sides, with the ribs expanding more easily to the side, and that there's some more length between the pelvis and the rib cage, thus allowing the lower ribs to move more easily. We we'll also see some relaxation in the shoulder girdle around breathing. Uh, I'd like to see more of that, and we'd see that happen later in the series. Basically, the 10 sessions are the 10 sessions. Each one has a specific goal and anatomically, and we do that. We'd aim for that goal with each client. At the same time, yeah, everyone's very much an individual, so how I get there with each person might be very different. Uh, what you see today might not be the way I'd approach somebody else in terms of what needs to happen with their particular structure. So it's a very individual work based on a system of getting to alignment and balance in gravity. Once I've finished the 10 sessions of rolfing, I usually ask people to wait six months to a year before they have more. <coughs> Excuse me. The intention there is that it allows time for the body and for the mind or the awareness to integrate the changes that have happened during that 10 sessions. Uh, I see for myself and I see a lot in my clients that over that 6 to 12 months change keeps happening. As they're more aware of their structure they start using it differently. Different muscles come into play, some will turn up, some will back off and their body keeps changing. After that 6 to 12 months I have them come in for a tune-up. That might be one session, it might be up to five. I don't do the same basic ten sessions again. That's done. There's also the five series, five session series of advanced rolfing that's available. So we take it a little bit by 
what I see when people come back to me, what needs integrating, or how we give you a deeper experience of what happened in the 10 sessions. Most people who attend a rolfing session do so because they're in some kind of physical pain. Their bodies may be distorted in some way, their shoulders may be uneven or hunched, or their back aching or legs twisted. After a series of rolfing sessions, many clients achieve relief from chronic complaints. However, these are a byproduct of rolfing, as rolfing does not address specific problems, but allows through a realigning the body to take care of itself. The problems that people come to me with develop over a lifetime. For some it might even be birth trauma. For some it may be that early fall off a bicycle when they were five or six years old. Uh, for some it might be a severe emotional event in their lives. We also see that people very often are not doing the healthiest thing for themselves in their workplace. Uh, a computer station is a great example. Uh, we end up with the head bent forward and consequently a lot of strain behind as we hold up this thing of around 14 pounds. Uh, I also see people who have suffered trauma in their adult lives, whether it be a car accident, a fall off a horse, uh, sometimes multiple falls off horses. So there's a real vast variety of issues that people are bringing to me. It can come about from work practices, uh, it can be sport related, it can be emotional history. I get a very diverse range of people coming to see me. Uh, I think the youngest at the moment is about two and the oldest 72, so it's quite a variety and people from all different professions. They come with a wide variety of things they want to see change. For some people it's about emotional growth or personal awareness. For some it's a bad back or a neck problem or shoulder problem. My intention again is to work through the system of 10 sessions to bring the body back towards alignment in gravity. As we do that, a lot of chronic problems often disappear. Uh, I've had people with severe back problems, long-term chronic back problems from 30 years standing. Uh, I've had people who are simply not happy about the way they look and like to change their posture. I have varying degrees of success. Uh, my record with backs is so far pretty good. I have a, a pretty good success rate on dealing with backs. In saying that, there is a limit to what we can do. A severe scoliosis we're not going to bring back to a straight mobile spine. What we look to do is to find the most adaptable place for that body where the person is able to compensate intelligently for what's going on in their body. And we give them as much mobility and adaptability as we can get. For some people, there's complete cessation of pain. For some, they find out that there are better ways to manage what's going on in their structure. And especially I see that at six to 12 months after rolfing, we see more change than we do at the end of 10 sessions. That the body likes organization, it likes uprightness, it likes lightness, ease, mobility, so it tends towards that, given some encouragement. Research on rolfing has begun to flourish in many areas. Studies on rolfing practice have been documented to cause the resulting occurrences in certain recipients, which may include physiological changes in voice, increased sensitivity and receptivity to environmental stimulation, increased vital air lung capacity, positive attitude changes and fewer psychosomatic complaints, measurable changes in physical structure and subjective self-perception, decreased anxiety, postural changes correlating with changes in self-esteem, 
and smooth the larger, less constrained and more efficient patterns of energy use. Uh, there are a few doctors who support the work. Basically, most of them don't know much about it. So, as I see it, we're a little bit outside the field of medicine in that I don't regard myself necessarily as a healer. Uh, we do the work to bring the body back towards alignment in gravity, to find balance and ease and mobility. In doing that, we find that a lot of old chronic conditions disappear. There has been some scientific research done on rolfing, mostly at the University of California in Los Angeles. Uh, some of the results uh, were quite startling. They indicate that rolfing has an effect on left brain, right brain balance, that it improves that balance. It can switch the nervous system from the fight or flight response to the more relaxed internal response. Uh, it also has very definite and measurable changes in terms of the vertical organisation of the body. There are some precautions in doing rolfing. We need to have great respect for our clients, that we don't push them over their boundaries. Uh, we also need to know exactly where we're going and why we're going there. This is deep structural work. It does make changes to the body. So we need to be very aware of the anatomy, the physiology, and very aware of our client in the moment, how they're managing, how they're taking the work on, how they're receiving it. So the process of training is designed to give you as much background as possible before you start working with people. I see that there can be some uh, problems with people who are not trained as Rolfers attempting to do this work, definitely. Uh, in not knowing what they're seeing or why they're doing what they're doing, in other words, if they're just parroting the session or copying the session, uh, they can do some harm, certainly. To become a Rolfer, you go through quite an, an extensive process of training. Uh, at the moment, there is no training happening in Australia. Uh, you need to go overseas. But there is a quite comprehensive preparation before you go into the rolfing training. You need to have a very solid background in anatomy, physiology, some psychology, some kinesiology. Uh, you need to have a hands-on background, a bit of massage or something similar. So there's a quite strict set of criterion to qualify as a rolfing student and then the rolfing training itself takes place over two sessions of, eight, of nine weeks, so 18 weeks in all. The personal experiences of rolfing recipients may vary, although many recipients of rolfing have reported the following experiences lightness and ease of movement, less need to sleep, more energy, less nervousness, loss of excess weight, clothes fitting better, easier and more relaxed breathing, elimination of chronic back problems, increased self-awareness, more assertiveness, and more willingness to participate in life. For me personally, uh, I was uh, very involved in skiing and athletics and I find nowadays I don't suffer the same aches and pains I used to. I do quite a lot of this work and I do it quite easily. My energy levels are better. Uh, definitely I was rolfed while I was skiing professionally and my balance improved dramatically. I went from uh, quite a good skier to uh, a very good skier almost overnight after years of experience. 
so I could measure the improvement quite dramatically on the slopes. Overall, I see the future of rolfing as uh, a slow expansion. Uh, there's not a lot of people who are committed enough to become rolfers. Uh, as well, I see us continuously refining the process. This has been going on now for some 30 years that there have been trained rolfers practicing around the world. And they've continuously been committed to refining, developing, learning more about the work and what it can do. And I see that process continuing. Rolfing is a process which allows an individual to experience the body as a changing dynamic whole. It is not massage, but a letting go of oneself into one centre and thereby allowing energy to flow freely through the body. This intricate process facilitates the realignment of the human frame, allowing physical, mental, emotional or spiritual healing to occur throughout.